button. Now we are recording. Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, and welcome to the Blurring the Lines podcast, episode 198. I am your host, Peter Nicolaitis, and joining me as always is my co-host, Adam Bell. That's me. How's it going, Peter? This is good. Now, what's that saying? Third time's a charm? Third time's a charm. Or let's three, hope. Or three strikes you're out. <laughs> <laughs> that could be that too, because this is number this is episode 198, the third edition. <laughs> so, yes. And it's we've... not is it because we didn't record it? No, no, it's uh, I, I will take I will take uh, credit slash blame slash responsibility for for both of these re-records. Um, but uh, as you know, uh, dear listener, you probably don't know, but I'll tell you, uh, recording this podcast is not my responsibility. I do share co-responsibility for reminding Adam to push the record button <laughs> that much I'll own. Um, but no, um, we had a little bit of an issue um we got sidetracked with some different uh topics and you know while i was ready to talk about them on the 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 uh, podcast we went down a rabbit hole uh two episodes or two recording attempts ago so we didn't get very far on that and then the last time we started to record the re-record um i had an exterminator show up and of course he showed up like five minutes after we started recording oh yeah um you know because because he was supposed to show up between the hours of like one and three or something like that and so i said great you know one o'clock my time three o'clock when being when we normally record so i said uh, great you know if he could show up first at my place that'd be great and of course he showed up at like 305 <laughs> and he was here for a solid hour and a half, uh, you know, plugging holes and setting traps for mice and stuff. So meanwhile, mm -hmm. Adam, poor Adam is sitting here the whole time on some tropical island waiting for me to respond and re return <laughs> the whole time. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, here we some, are. We've got some serious wor first world problems. <laughs> this is true um from a first world perspective our problems are pretty severe <laughs> yes so um so yeah, that answers, what's uh what's happening that answers our first you know topic is are we actually going to record today and the answer is yes we haven't we haven't <laughs> hit, we haven't hit save yet so <laughs> but we're, we're we're off to a good start but you started recording and you're using Zoom to record into the cloud. So th theoretically, right? Our, uh, it is on the cloud, right? Not to the No, computer. no, I hit, I hit it local to my computer. Oh, goodness. All kinds of things could go wrong. <laughs> okay, then. Okay, never mind. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, so do you want to hit some of our previous topics that we talked about, but yet did not actually record? uh goodness i don't even know where to start um why don't we why don't we why don't we start down the list so um, you said you had found a great Oktoberfest. i did i found a couple of great Oktoberfest, and now at this point i don't even remember which one i like the best <laughs> <laughs> uh i think it was the weihen stefaner um i think that was my favorite one mm -hmm. uh i had it so on September 14th, a local German restaurant over in Somerville, about a mile from where I used to live when I moved down uh, to the Boston area about 11 years ago, um, they had they kicked off their Oktoberfest. And in classic German fashion, they start on uh, September 14th and it mm -hmm. runs until October 29th. Nice. So I have a full month of Oktoberfesting to do. Um, I've already gone there three times. <laughs> um i have not gone to any other oktoberfest stuff but this uh saturday tomorrow actually in my hometown in medford there's an oktoberfest right uh sponsored by the uh, chamber of commerce right in city hall area perfect and uh so i plan on zipping by there uh, but i made my own little uh oktoberfest uh style dinner last night uh had a jack's abbey copper legend which is their oktoberfest lager Mm -hmm. uh along with a couple of uh pieces of uh bratwurst and i made my own uh red cabbage uh and a little bit of pasta so it's, yeah. it's pretty similar to how my mom used to do things so mm -hmm. I, was, I was pretty happy with that 
So cool. um, yeah, it's it's Oktoberfest season, and huzzah! huzzah. So I will drink to that. Of course, I'm. This is not the Friends with Brews podcast, so I'll drink a cup of tea, not a not a, <laughs> not a beer. Yeah, you brewed the tea too, so that's fine. It looks like uh, green tea, though. Is it? It is. It is. It's a little green. It's a seasick tea. So, seasick tea. Yes. Oh, having I... a uh, again my cha. This is uh, the one with toasted rice in in the uh, in with the leaves. So oh, that actually sounds a, good. Yeah, it's it's pretty yummy. It's probably my favorite type of green tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I like well, I like rice in things. Um, like there's a there's a Mexican breakfast drink. Uh, Arroz con leche. It's it's rice and milk and cinnamon, and you heat it, not to boiling, and but then once you once all the rice and stuff gets soft, man, it's tasty. <laughs> okay, Make, it's a full breakfast. You pour the thing with the rice in it. You can drink it and then eat the rice. And <laughs> yeah, see, I try not to do too much, like you know, rice for breakfast kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, you know, starting off with the heavily, you know, uh, high glycemic, uh, carby <laughs> type of thing <laughs> tends to put me to sleep. Uh-huh. Um, but when I was in Costa Rica, I had rice for breakfast almost every day and I was not mm-hmm. complaining about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> then, then, uh, then my next left off topic was the, uh, you, you can't sip wild turkey. Um, <laughs> talk to me about this <laughs> at least at least i can't sip wild turkey the uh so i got i got top shelf wild turkey because the bourbon i like is uh four roses uh single barrel but i couldn't get it there for less than 60 dollars for a regular fifth and i was yes. like oh let's try a wild turkey at a more reasonable price about i mean it was about a 40 dollar wild turkey so it's good i mean it's not mm-hmm. i didn't i didn't dust the shell or dust the dust it off of the bottom shelf and <laughs> so but uh yeah i just can't sip it like i can my bourbon um that's fine if you wanted to mix it but meh. it's it's yeah we I, I do recall we had that conversation i don't remember how we got on to the topic of of sipping bourbons i i thought it was Maybe this was a previous episode. I, I do remember some time ago, wasn't all that long ago though, you were talking about um shopping for whiskey and you know, giving some as a present for somebody. And there was oh. like the thirty dollar bottle and the sixty dollar bottle. Was that one of these re-records that we're talking about, or was that a previous episode that actually did make it to, to uh, publication? Yeah, it actually made it to publication. No, I was in okay. I was in there and I I was buying a bottle of what I liked. And there were two women there trying to decide between the bottle of what I liked and yes. the the twenty dollars cheaper version. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So yeah, so it's good to have. I mean, sometimes, right? Sometimes cheaper is not necessarily any worse. And you know, like you find a, a decent, cheap little whatever thing, and it works just fine, and you like it, and that's great. And sometimes you actually get to pay for something better mm-hmm. so well, you know tito's vodka is a perfect yep. example of that yep i like it's, tito's it's not i mean it's not a high price point a fifth i think is 26 to 28 dollars after taxes yep. and yep. um i mean i don't get a headache when i drink it you know yep. any alcohol if you overconsume, you'll get a headache but if you have yep. a drink or two no headache I tend to not um, not be too picky when it comes to vodkas. Really? Uh, yeah, I I don't know that I can really tell the difference between a lot of them. <laughs> so, well, um, I yeah, would I don't know. I would agree with that that I can't really tell a large difference in the taste uh-huh. uh, because it's not it's not an awesome taste. I mean, uh, really, it's like vodka. Tastes like vodka, but like I know alcohol. if I know if I get it in a plastic bottle or somebody's pouring it from a plastic bottle, I'm gonna have a headache. But I've gotten Tito's out of plastic bottles. I think maybe it's something maybe, else. Maybe, well, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. know. I just equate plastic bottles with the cheap stuff. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, plastic tends to be cheaper. That's why we use it for so yeah. many things. 
So. This this vodka was made with tater skins, not potatoes. No tater skins. No. Just the skins. <laughs> Just the skins. <laughs> we went down to TJI Fridays. We ordered, got an order of tater skins, <laughs> threw them in a bucket, let them sit for a couple of months, and boom, vodka. <laughs> Although, so so uh, one of my clients, um, they're no longer a client anymore, but they had uh, international um, partners, you know, throughout the world, and one of the engineers was Romanian, uh, and so he came into town to visit and he brought vodka from Romania with him and it's made with prunes and I it was really awful <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean it really it it tasted awful and it was so so strong uh I mean, and I like, well, maybe it's just really, really strong and maybe I just need to mix it with something. It just, whatever you mix it with, you just ruined it. If you, if you put it in orange juice, you just ruined a perfectly good glass of orange juice. <laughs> I was just going to say is if, if you, you know, if, if you hear that this was made with prunes and you think it would taste bad, you're probably on the right track, right? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you've brewed enough at this point. Anything that will ferment and then will convert that to alcohol, for the most part, it's going to lose all of its original flavor because mm -hmm. you don't taste. Uh, I mean, you're not exactly tasting. You can taste wheat in your beer. Yep. But once that beer is fermented into liquor, you don't you no longer taste wheat. So. So that's something. So at first, for the longest time, I thought vodka had to be made with potatoes. I thought vodka was, you know, a distilled fermented drink made with potatoes. But then if, apparently that's not the case because you can make vodka with lots of other things. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what really qualifies as a vodka, like how you make vodka. Um, but what I do do um what i do remember was there was a brand for a few years i don't think they're around anymore um i forget the name of the the distillery or the whatever they call it um but they had two lines of vodka they were made in vermont and one was called vermont gold and the other was vermont white or vermont silver i forget i mm -hmm. think vermont white uh the vermont white was made with cow's milk and the Vermont gold was made from maple sap. Mm -hmm. So like maple syrup. And there was a distinct taste. You could have, there was a prof, a little bit of a, just a, a hint of maple to the vodka. Mm -hmm. And I do remember not liking the milk one, the one, cause the, it had, I don't know. I don't remember. I can't say that it didn't taste like, it didn't taste milky, but it tasted a little it just tasted a little off to me. Mm -hmm. So I never really liked it that much. Yeah. So, you know, so, so yeah, I don't, I don't know, but, but I guess, you know, there's, you can do, you can make vodka out of different things, but I've heard it said before though, by like some, you know, a sommelier or a scotch aficionado is like different whiskeys have lots of different flavor profiles and there's, you know, unique this and that and it's, it's you know like akin to wine tasting you know like you can tell the varietal and the vintage and mm -hmm. you know yada 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 whereas uh, the comment on with on vodka was vodka has no personality mm -hmm. you know so i guess that's one of the reasons that i'm not so picky you know like yeah vodka whatever it you know vodka is vodka as far as mm -hmm. i know i don't know so anyway oh, all right. are we ready Let's get started. What are you doing? Stop. <laughs> you... Okay. So I did a so... quick Google search while we while we were chatting there because yes. um so vodka, generally speaking, uh can be made from cereals, so grain, so wheat, sorghum, rye, but then lots of vodka brands do potatoes and sugar beets, like you like you thought. But mm -hmm. yeah, the the vodka, um, so it is going through filtration and refining process to remove impurities and smooth mouthfeel. So more or less, it's 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 along the lines of of a PGA, you know, process. 
keep it you know it really doesn't the, matter the professional golfers association <laughs> pure grain alcohol oh okay yeah that works <laughs> so yeah i'll have to look and see what what makes a vodka specifically a vodka instead of like uh, a rum which is also a, a white alcohol but i think rum mm -hmm. typically has other things put in it like coconut and and other flavors sure spiced rum dark rum mm -hmm. rum rum yeah so so vodka really is just getting that that alcohol and 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 you know that like the the bourbons and things like so the the bourbon that i like the four roses is it, it they make the vodka the pga what the the alcohol and then they put that into the barrel and mm -hmm. it's a it's an oak barrel that is burned on the inside like it's literally they they put a flamethrower in there and burn it got it and then the alcohol sits in that barrel and that barrel flavors the the alcohol that's why it's brown okay. it's okay that's when they, one way to do it <laughs> when it cuz when it goes into the into the barrel it's clear so all alcohol is clear when it's distilled okay that's good to know mhm mm yeah so, so what's it, what what is what is moonshine what's that how's that different from rum or vodka so moonshine really refers to um, how it was made. It's kind of a homemade process, but at the end of the day, it's distilling beer, a beer, you know, a, 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 something that was a beer equivalent into liquid, you know, just pure alcohol. Okay. So it's distilled, distills the alcohol out. So moonshine is... Um, not flavored typically it just comes out what you get out is what you drink <laughs> okay but you know uh, moonshine's and, but, become but a it, craft now but wait so i guess i missed so moonshine versus vodka what's the difference beer i think it's the preparation in in how it's actually prepared like how it's actually distilled okay i don't okay. think typically there or i don't think that there's a large difference in the composition of moonshine or vodka the alcohol okay. is very okay. much the same pretty similar okay mm -hmm. okay all right interesting today on today we may on this week some, in distillery we, yeah we may have to oh, we put, should put a pin in that <laughs> differences this is in alcohol what is the difference let's learn something today it's an educational podcast mm -hmm. oh moonshine. brother okay um what what else okay um let's let's go back we're circling on all those different things great run and a half marathon you said it was the best half marathon you'd ever run it was so not counting the full marathons that i've run <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, this was my second half marathon and uh yeah i did it in about uh, two hours 37 minutes if i recall correctly this is about three weeks ago or so now mm -hmm. um but it was my first trail half marathon and mm -hmm. that was a fun one yeah um yeah it was uh there was a number of things going for it first off i love trail running so that was great mm -hmm. um half marathon is kind of the sweet spot for me it feels like there's effort you know i definitely worked but mm -hmm. uh, when i'm done i'm really really tired but i'm not destroyed like after a marathon mm -hmm. um so yeah, it was fun, but I think one of the biggest, uh, factors about this one was I got up early and got into my car and drove to the starting line. Mm -hmm. Unlike my previous three races where I had spent the night somewhere else in a yeah. strange bed every time. Mm -hmm. So that made a big difference. Um, yeah. So this was so much fun. The, uh, the trail animals running club nearby sponsors this one. They do another one in the spring, which I will probably sign up for. It's in a different, mm -hmm. different area. Um, but I'm trying to decide which I'll be doing in the springtime. I might, I might just go for another 50 K at that mm -hmm. point. I'm not sure. Um, 50 milers still feeling a little daunting, but I don't know. I need, need a lot of time to prep for something like that. Um, but I figure at the very least I'll do a half, you know, another half marathon trail run in the spring at this place. That's, that was a lot of fun. What was the temperature like? Uh, it was in the sixties, I think. Yeah. It so was probably warm. Pretty, 
pretty pleasant, I would think. It was night. Well, it was coming off of that big heat wave that we had been going through. So, Mm -hmm. you know, really just getting out of every day in the 80s, you know, for a long time. So it was much, much improved compared to that. So that Mm -hmm. was that was very nice. Um, Still, it was warm. You know, it was a summerish run. Not so, Mm -hmm. you know, since then, over this just this past week, the the uh, the the temperatures come way down since then so it's uh you know we're definitely in fall now mm-hmm. but it was definitely um you know cooler than than like the summer running which you know that's that's kind of ideal you want to train in less than optimal temperatures and race in optimal temperatures you know so cool um but it was fun I learned a couple of lessons about, you know, uh, food and stuff. Um, I'm sort of starting to switch to bring more salty, savory foods along and less sugary stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, just seems to sit with my body a little better, but I also learned, um, last earlier this year, late early. Yeah. Early this year, I bought, um, a pouch, you know, sort of like a fanny pack, a hip base, uh, waist patch. Mm -hmm. And I've used it a number of times. It's great. And I was using it instead of the over the shoulder, you know, backpack and, um, two bottles on the shoulder pack that I have also, Mm -hmm. because I just found it was easier for me to get into and out of when I wanted something to fish something out of it. Mm Mm-hmm. But I had never used it for fast, um, you know, anaerobic tempo running stuff. I just used it on long, easy going runs. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I had never used it when my breath was getting really high and having to really do my belly breathing. And I was finding that having that thing around my waist constricted my breathing. Oh, yeah. And I discovered this about three miles in to the race. <laughs> <laughs> So I was caught, you know, frequently having to adjust it a little bit. I had to loosen it up so I could breathe enough, but that mm-hmm. made it so that it had to flop around a little. So yeah. Yeah, I managed, mm-hmm. but um, no, it was, it was a lot of fun. So I definitely am looking forward to that again. Um, but not to, uh, you know, be outdone, you know, getting into the car and driving half an hour to the race, that was fun. But this <laughs> past Saturday, um, I rolled out of bed and walked about, uh, I don't know, a third of a mile or so to the Medford five miler. Mm -hmm. And, and I ran that race and that was way fun. Um, There's something to be said for walking to the starting line from your own bed. So, (laughs) I mean, I got there, I registered the day of the race and they like handed me this book and a t-shirt. I'm like, I don't have any place to put this. Well, I guess I'd better run home first, ran home, (laughs) dropped it off, came back. (laughs) Um, I, I, you know, started myself in between like the nine minute and eight minute mile people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, sure enough, five minutes, my, uh, five miles, my, uh, pace was eight minutes, 36 uh, seconds per mile, which for me is pretty darn fast. Mm -hmm. So, but again, home field advantage, um, while I had never run this exact route, I had run all parts of this race course numerous times over the years in training. Mm -hmm. So I knew everything I knew. Okay. This hill's coming up next. I got to save a little bit, you know, like, all right, two miles to go. Oh, there's this part here. I knew they threw in this dog leg, you know, hill just to like add in to get the exact five miles. And then Mm -hmm. coming off of that, I'm like one mile. I just opened up and gave it everything I got for the last mile. And, um, yeah, I made my last mile, the best mile on that one. So I was, I was pretty happy I saved. And the funny thing was I was going into it, like just saying like, yeah, you know what? I'm just, it's just, it's just a fun run. I'm not going to try to break any records or anything. And mm-hmm. I guess as I got going, I was like, no, oh, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go for a record. So let's see what we I got. Did. Yeah. Let's see it. So, well, we got a record. <laughs> so, nice. So yeah. Well, there you go. David Goggins wants you to suffer more before your runs and not, you know, you stay hard. <laughs> oh cool. man. So yeah. So that's been, that's been fun. And mm-hmm. um, girlfriend has her first race, uh, her 10 K uh, this coming Saturday. Cool. Not, not tomorrow, but the, the week after. Are you running it too? No. Um, it's the Boston 10 K for women. Mm, so, um, but I will be but there that's... to support that's so binary. I know. I just, yeah. <laughs> what if, can I identify as a female runner just for the day so I can run? Yeah. So, 
<laughs> uh, anyway, but no, um, my next race will be October 29th, which is the Newburyport half marathon, not a trail, mm -hmm. just a regular old run. Okay. And, um, so, uh, that'll be fun. And then to finalize it, um, I've, uh, signed up for a turkey trot on Thanksgiving. Me too. So, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> right. So my there you go. whole, my whole family is so, oh, wow. Um, I will, we'll see how it plays out. I, I will probably walk with Elizabeth because Elizabeth doesn't run. Uh, okay. She's got asthma and okay. she, it's, just, it's not worth the training for her on that. Um, yeah. But I mean, we walk regularly, so I will either walk with her or it, since we're all four going, I may run with my oldest daughter because she does run and run the 5k. And if the youngest daughter walk, walks with my wife, so, okay, but I mean, because I'm either going to run it in a half hour or walk it in an hour. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> and that's, you know, that's, yeah, my walking pace is around 20 minutes per mile. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yeah. I, I remember that. I remember um, when I was figuring my time for the, um, the ultra, the, the 50 K that I did last year, you know, I, I figured it out. I was like, yeah, to make the cutoff, I have to just barely walk you know go a little faster than walking yeah so i was i was pretty you know happy i didn't come down to that but mm -hmm. uh you know it, it was it was fun so cool. but yeah it's nice to know you know when you're thinking about it like look if my goal is just to finish i can just walk this <laughs> and i can do it so we'll be fine you know? yeah so well, cool yeah be fun well we'll have to uh it's shared texting on the uh, turkey trot, you'll, but you'll probably be up an hour ahead of me and you'll be back drinking coffee by the time we're at the starting line. <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, that was the other thing too, is I've noticed with, with half marathons, they usually start um, after the full marathons. Mm -hmm. So not only do they finish sooner, they start later. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, as it happens, like when, um, so this spring when I ran one, so my friends, Greg and Carola and I all ran the, uh, the cheap marathon in dairy. Um, but Greg decided just to do the half. And so they started that the half people started out like half an hour after the, you know, the, the full marathoners. Mm -hmm. And the same thing was true at the, the fall classic though. The, um, it was supposed to the 50 milers, the 50 K people, uh, the full marathon people, they were all supposed to start at, I think 7 AM and uh, the half marathons, the 10 K people, and they were all supposed to start at eight. Mm -hmm. As it happened, we had a lot of high winds and storms the night before. So the trail cleanup crews were still there and they delayed everything by an hour. So uh, we ended up starting at like eight, you know, like half an hour later, the, the, the full marathon people in the full distance, they started like a full hour later. Okay. So we were only half an hour behind them, but still, you know, you get to, get to sleep in a little more and you know, mm -hmm. so so i'm i'm seeing the appeal you know i would like to go back and do the vermont 50 again you know at some point but mm -hmm. um you know sleeping in your own bed it's it's really kind of nice <laughs> so, so 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 you said dairy is that in maine no dairy new hampshire d-e-r-r-y okay yep all yep. right well the the reason i asked or well the the reason it caught my attention is uh, you know, Stephen King's 112263 book, he refers to a town in Derry. And, you know, I assumed he was talking about a, a fake town like Castle Rock, you know. Yeah. His, his... And is, is his rule Derry like, you know, as in farm? I don't know. I listened to the audio book, so I don't know how it was spelled. Because uh -huh. uh, I, the the disparaging way he wrote about the town you wouldn't typically write about a real town that way. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, I mean he wrote really about Dallas, place, sure. <laughs> you know, but Kennedy was shot in Dallas. So he had to talk about real Dallas, but as, as interesting. So no, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> cool. uh, all right. All right. So exciting things for me that I'm doing is well, one, we went Let's to Vegas it. last week. Ooh. And uh, the reason we went to Vegas, it was not to go gambling, but was to 
visit a shop in Henderson, a uh, truck restoration shop. I so remember this. Customchevytruck.com is their website. And what he does is he just restores old Chevy trucks. So uh, we went there. One, I wanted to make sure I'm going to send my truck, a family heirloom, and a big old fat check to restore it to a guy named Tony outside of Vegas. <laughs> are you going to go visit it? Are you going to see it's real? No, no. I just trust it. I trust the website. Mm, that's the sure. 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 So we went out there. Uh, we saw the shop. We, I mean, it. We he's got two places. He's got uh, he's got a shop in Henderson, and then at his house, he's got a gr- garage uh, shop. And they actually work between the two of them. And he they call uh, his home the farm. And on the farm, uh, if you look at it on Google Maps, he's got the the, the corpses of other old trucks but it not like so he's got like cabs and they're they're all lined up i mean they're all fenced in and you know it's not like driving past a junkyard that's disorganized and you know nasty but it it was pretty cool i was like oh i'm pretty sure based on google maps this is this is the right place because here's all the trucks that are lined up um so it was really cool went to the main shop where they're uh, where they're assembling the trucks and they had like 15 trucks that were in process, you know, in various stages of completeness. Uh, two of them that were fully completed, they were headed to France. They were, they were nice. Um, so, so we're sending out my truck and uh, it was supposed to go today, but it can't go today because, you know, my truck's been running. It's been running for years and I've had carburetor problems because it sits, uh, the gasoline goes stale and, um, it, it turns into like a lacquer, even though I put, I put fuel stabilizer in it so that it doesn't go, it doesn't go bad, but Mm -hmm. it does go bad. And, and I've been meaning to for years to put a cutoff valve on the, on the carburetor so Mm -hmm. that I take it into the garage I turn the cutoff valve. I let it run until all the gas is gone from the carburetor. And then it's sitting there dry, almost dry. You know, it'd be so I don't have that gas sitting in the carburetor evaporating and gumming up the works. So I told him, come pick it up on Friday. And they're like, does the truck run? It's like, yeah, the truck runs. It's been running. And it's like, well, you know, because if it doesn't run, we have to get a different tow truck because you know they can either drive it up on it or they can cable it up on it like a tow truck you know where you get to the the tow truck gets to the back of the flatbed and then it pulls cables on the front end and pulls it all the way up so i'm like yeah the truck runs it ran right up until tuesday i pulled it out i was like i'm gonna be prepared for friday so i i pulled the truck out it's sitting in my driveway idling i'm cleaning the garage out it's <laughs> and it just shuts down and I can't get it to restart. Uh, so now I have the carburetor torn apart trying to make it run, but it's, um, it's, it's a moot point. I mean, I'm not going to spend any money on it because the truck, I won't even have that engine. I won't have that carburetor, you know? So it's a complete yeah. frame off restoration. So when I get, so he'll take the body off replace the frame so the, re- the, re- the frame is going to be replaced new front end with disc brakes and rack and pinion steering wheel uh independent rear suspension you know so it's going to be a safe driving vehicle put mm-hmm. the body and all that back on but i'm not using the same engine getting a new engine getting a new transmission <laughs> yeah. so that it makes zero sense for me to spend any money making that thing work and it's right. going to cost, it's actually going to cost me a little bit more to get it towed out there because now I got to get a tow truck that can uh, cable it up onto it. But who cares? I mean, it, well, so it's twelve hundred dollars to have it towed out there, which right. isn't that bad when you consider it. It's a tow seventeen hundred miles from my driveway to his Oof. shop. So twelve hundred dollars kind of seems 
like well that's not bad <laughs> you know <laughs> but it's like well it's going to cost more because you got to get get a different tow truck like well how much well it probably costs like 1500 but it would cost me 300 dollars to get the truck fixed you know there's i mean it cost me more than 300 dollars to get it fixed because i can't get it to the shop i got to tow it to a shop to get them to fix mm-hmm. the carburetor and figure out what's wrong because i've exhausted what i know to do and mm-hmm. uh i mean and i'm i'm somewhat competent when it comes to engines on old old vehicles you know like i couldn't work on i couldn't well i can't work on everything on my truck but at, at some point where the computer becomes involved you know i'm out when it comes to the fuel injection i'm out you know but on my old truck with a carburetor and things like that i can work on those but like ugh. It's beyond me, so somebody's gonna have to mm-hmm. figure it out and forget it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, beyond my beyond beyond my pay grade. Beyond my pay grade, yeah, it's beyond my my effort level. It's like why why fix this when the truck's going to be completely rebuilt anyway? But kind of as a yeah. side thing, while we were there, <clears throat> we did gamble in Vegas. We found at uh, MGM Park. <clears throat> It has a non-smoking casino. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we've got one of those here at, in Massachusetts. Really? Yeah. So. It's a uh, game changer. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we, I mean, we stayed in the Bellagio and we, I mean, the Bellagio was nice. It was really expensive, but it was a really nice, and it was, it was just Elizabeth and me. And, um, you know, we wanted it, we wanted to have a nice trip. So we did, stayed there we found the park MGM and actually had, it was the first time I've ever had a good time gambling and Hmm. not because I won. I mean, I did not win just to be clear. Um, I didn't, I didn't lose. I mean, I had a budget and I didn't spend more than my budget and I didn't lose all of my budget. So Mm -hmm. to me, it was a win. I, I was willing to lose up to everything in that, you know, money that I brought out there and I didn't lose at all. So, and I had a good time. So we played, played blackjack. Um, and what, what I was looking for was a gaming table where I could have fun, you know, interact with the dealer, interact with the people who are also playing, um, there to be a lot of, you know a lot of time where you can play where it's like mm-hmm. oh plunk i lost plunk i lost oh all yeah. my money's gone yeah. now i'm out of here yes you know, like, that's, well, that's, so, that's what my gambling experience is usually like well up to that point that was what my gambling experience was you know i brought money to the table it all disappeared in minutes and i was left bored and with a bad taste in my mouth i was like well uh-huh. and no why. money yeah, why would anybody want to do this? If I'm going to throw away money, I'll at least throw it away on buying something. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. So, but I sat down and and played for like two and a half hours on blackjack uh, mm-hmm. at this table uh, with this dealer, and you know, and people came and went, but you know, we were having a good time, and she was this funny older Jewish woman, you know, probably sixty seven. And she was just hilarious. You know, she knew everybody and she gave you a hard time. And she's like, when are you leaving here? I'm like, well, not leaving till Saturday. Well, it's not soon enough, you know, (laughs) you know, so she, but she was having a good, thanks. Yeah. (laughs) But it was, it was fun. And, you know, the, you know, the deal, and she was helping me play because I know the rules of blackjack. I know most of the strategy of blackjack, but then there's the, you know, the advanced strategy, you know, of when you split, when you, when you look at a dealer's hand, like if, if I, if I, if you had a 10 and a two, which is 12 and a dealer has a card down and a face up with a two, do you hit or would you stand? Would you ever think that you should stand on 12? Well, uh, I mean, the odds, what, 50, 50, uh, you're, you're going to 21, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you got, you at, at 12, so 12, you know, generally speaking, 
you hit when you, so a person decides 16 is the number. So 16, if, if you're going to decide to hit on 16, you either decide every 16 that you get, you always hit or you always stand, but don't okay. mix it up because your odds go down when you mix it up just statistically speaking. Okay. So I so decided 16 is the cutoff number. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not smart. So if you have 17, it's not smart to hit. I mean, mm -hmm. you can, I mean, it's a hard hit, you know, cause you gotta get four or below, you know, right. so you're statistically, your, st your numbers go way down. So in a 12 situation, I learned that you are supposed to hold because uh, the dealer has to get 17. So you are assuming that the dealer has 12 when you have a card down and a two up. They may not. Wait, I missed something. I missed I miss something. Why does the dealer have to get 17? The dealer has to. They can't, they can't hold on anything less than 16 or 17, depending on what the house rule is. They have to ah, hit. So if they okay. have a 15, they have to hit. So- okay. You know, if they have a 15, you know, so if you, if they have a, a two, three, four, five, or six showing, you know, they have to hit. So your hope is that they're going to bust. So you don't want to do anything that could possibly bust you. So if you have 12 and they show a 12, that's supposed to be a 50, 50 statistic and you just sit it out and okay. they will break it or or they'll win. I mean, that's kind of the case anyway, but uh, okay. things like that, that I didn't know. Cause it, it, it seems obvious that you didn't know that either. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, <laughs> but my you... blackjack strategy is, you know, along the lines of, yeah, I guess I'm over 13. Ah, geez. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I don't have a strategy. Yeah. It's kind of like chess. You can understand the rules of chess and not sure. be a great chess player. Absolutely. <laughs> that's I don't me. Know that feeling. I know the rules <laughs> of chess, but I'm not a great chess player, but up uh, two over one up one over two. That's yeah. all I got. <laughs> yeah. Well, another one that I can't figure out why they, they, um, they, make this the quote the rule to do you know it's like well, if this if this happens you do this so an ace is worth one or eleven one or eleven yes mm -hmm. so if you get an ace and a six that's 17 if you count the ace is 11 sure. so that's considered a soft 17 you are right. only supposed to hit on that but okay. But, but I have seventeen. Can't I just win on that seventeen? No, you always hit on that. But I could win with seventeen and, and not take a hit, not take a chance. Well, because it doesn't matter what you get. You can if you get a ten, it doesn't change anything. You you still have you now have um, eighteen. But you know, but I'm thinking, but what if I get a two, three, four, five, you know, something that doesn't make this thing any better, but that's one of those statistic things that I didn't know. They're like, well, you always hit it because like I said, even if you get a 10, you're no worse off or a nine, you're no worse off and huh. anything else you get low, then you just hit on it. And that's just the way that it goes. And you're like, there are all these like things that are like, well, that's just the way that you do it. I'm like, no, okay. why? <laughs> <laughs> What was funny was, uh, so I was playing there and, and they have these floor bosses and the floor bosses are walking around because I sat there for hours. Uh, and yeah. the cool thing is, and you drink beer, uh, well, whatever you want to, whatever you want to drink, you tell them and they bring it to you. If you're playing the, the drinks are free. I thought that that was only for like high rollers. Um, okay. But no, everybody can be suckered into spending more money if they're drunk. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're sitting there playing, you 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 keep getting drinks but um so the 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 bosses are walking around and they switch up too so they're keeping everything accountable and this one guy he was he came along he was a youngish guy and he was he was funny and uh he he, he said, looks at me and he says yeah i don't want to play poker with you i was like why not he's like i don't know what you're doing <laughs> i was like um 
I think it's pretty clear what I'm doing is I'm doing whatever the dealer tells me to do because I don't know what I'm doing either. <laughs> I mean, like, like I said, I, I I understand the rules of blackjack and I understand, but the these other strategies that are like advanced, I didn't know these. <laughs> <laughs> so so was he like just angry that you didn't know what you were doing or was he angry that he didn't know what you were doing? He he was it was very light. He was just joking around. He, but oh, he was okay. like, yeah, I wouldn't want to play poker with you because I don't know what the heck you're doing. Because <laughs> he wouldn't be able to read me because that's what he was. Just, I was going to say, he, you're, you're so erratic me. and sporadic, chaotic. He's like, I can't I can't beat this guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know what the heck he's doing. <laughs> so yes. I did. I did, like I said, I, I, I lost money, but I won enough that I could keep playing at the table. Um, so, I mean, I won some big hands and I won some bad, I, and we did play roulette and, and I hit a single number on roulette. I black, I bet on 35 and got a single number and that, that pays 35 to one. And I put a $5 down on that one as my bet and got $175 out of that. And of course that just, okay. that just helped keep me going. <laughs> sure. I So the only times I've ever gambled, I've lost the money. I went in saying, you know, I'm going to spend this hundred dollars or whatever, or $200, you know, the, the last time I, I gambled at the casino, I went there because vendors, you know, invited me and they gave me mm -hmm. $200 to, to spend. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize, you know, until I cashed it in because they gave me the certificate. I went to the certificate. The thing hands me $200 of cash. I should have just walked right out with $200 yeah, in my pocket. Yeah, you could have walked right out. I didn't. I should have, <laughs> you know, or just gone over to the bar and spend a couple, you know. So anyway, yeah. live and you learn. Next, I got I to gotta, I gotta message him. Hey, you doing any more events? Yeah, <laughs> bring me over. <laughs> tell, tell him I want to come too. So, yeah exactly throwing away money yeah. <laughs> well oh, so we were we were staying at the bellagio and so we came out and and we'd been there before it had been mm -hmm. 10 years since we were there so we came out and we were you know we came out the door and we were we were looking at the changes and apparently we looked like yokels you know that needed to be you know looking bothered. up yeah, looking <laughs> up. Yeah, looking. Never look up. That just yeah. Uh, so this guy comes up to us. Uh, you know, he's like, "Hey, where y'all from?" Yeah, I was like, oh crap, we're we're from Nashville. Blah blah blah. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm from Texas. I could tell the way you talk." And he said, "He said I want to get you. you know, I'm gonna give you a free show." I'm like, "No, we're good." Um, because we'd already booked a show. So we saw Blue Man Group, and that was fun as a side. Yep. Um, but it's like, no, we're good. Um, I'm going to give you some, I mean, some free gambling money and you, you go up here and it's like, no, we're good. We're good. Thanks. And then his partner comes up and his partner's like, I'm, yeah, I, so here we go. I'm going to give you the, I'm like, no, I'm not taking anything. No, I'm going to give you $200 free gambling here. You just head on up and you, I'm like, no, no. I, well, I'll give you that. I was like, no. And, and finally he realized I was not going to take anything from him. If he had offered yep. me a million dollars cash out of the suitcase that he's like, right, here's the money. I wasn't going to take it. He just went mm -hmm. and turned and left. <laughs> he's like, yeah, this guy's not going to buy anything. <laughs> yeah. I, give up. I, mean, I didn't, I didn't want, well, we didn't have enough time to go visiting we didn't want to go on a helicopter ride. We didn't want to go to another casino because I mean it's a it's a hassle to go to a casino because mm -hmm. you it, you got to walk. So all you know we're on the strip and you know there are strip bridges to get to the other side and you can't. You, there are no crosswalks. There are no pedestrians crossing the strip. Uh, right. Other than like side you know parallel to the the strip, there's some yep. crosswalks, but there's no crossing the strip. It's almost it's treated like an interstate yep. uh, as far as that goes. So you have to go over these walking bridges, and if you wanted to go somewhere, I mean it's a it's a forty five minute walk to go anywhere just because of the hassle factor. And then once you get in the the maze that they call a casino to find what you want to find, you know. <laughs> That's fun. 
<laughs> yeah i mean that's one thing i like the so the casino we have here um you know over in everett massachusetts it's about four miles away from my place mm-hmm. um i just actually ran there um the, on monday for my long run i did a 10 mile loop right around the casino so um number one in massachusetts you can't smoke in it that changes everything right off the bat right mm-hmm. number two um free parking which in the boston area that's huge yeah number three uh free electric vehicle chargers downstairs so like i'm like all right you know so now that that said i've eaten there a couple times they've got a little you know night shift brewing that's a local you know local pub tavern kind of thing unremarkable you know Mm -hmm. it's not that great Uh, i've been to the rare steakhouse which is expensive Mm -hmm. um i wasn't picking up the tab that night though so i don't really know but I've seen, yeah, it gets like three and a half stars on Yelp, which, you know, if you're Mm -hmm. paying premium prices, you'd hope would be a little better, Mm -hmm. but I can't tell if people just have their hopes up too high or, or what I thought the filet mignon I had there a few months ago was just fine. So I was not complaining about that, but, um, I like it, you know, but I do have to set aside my, um, uh, my thought for like, you know, like, wow, just imagine what other good you could do with all this money. (laughs) <laughs> there's you know so i have to kind of like suspend that part of my uh my uh conscious and conscience to to you know get away with it it's just like yeah it's just it's mm-hmm. decadent let's just put it that way yeah you know i actually didn't know uh gambling was legal in in massachusetts but i only it's been go for to, a few years now yeah I, I only go to boston how long has it been legal uh i think it was i think it was right before covid Oh, okay. So, so that's way sooner than I thought. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's been you know. So the 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 Encore Casino went in. I think I want to say it was like 2019. I think. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but oh. um, yeah. I mean, you know, I like it. It's easy to get to. They take really. It's a nice route to go running. You know, the 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 grass and the trees that they maintain are well manicured, and so you know, it's like yeah, it's a. It, they make for a pleasant experience. So. Mm-hmm. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. So, so let's, I was thinking about, I was, I was thinking about the gambling tables as a business owner. And so if I walk up to a table, let's say I I walk up to a blackjack table, I've got $200. I give them, you know, I, I give them the $200. I gamble. I get, let's say that I get all the way up to $2,400 at the table, Mm -hmm. turn around lose it all during that time i've had three or four beers i've uh tipped i've tipped the waitress i've tipped the dealer tipping the dealer is a thing i didn't know that um so whenever tipping whenever my dealer, is a thing yeah i mean tipping oh. you, you're, you're tipping everybody uh so uh, tipping well it's kind of, I mean, it's fun but at that point because, you know, the dealer gives, the dealer gives you good advice and turns, you know, it turns it into like, you know, a four or five times your original bet. And yeah, you tip them. I mean, you're like, you're like, thanks. You know, we all, you know, and the table's having a good time. So I've drank beer. I've sat there. I've tipped. Um, I walked away from the table, zero dollars in my hand, two hundred dollars short. Did I lose? I mean, how much money did the casino make in that particular transaction? Mm-hmm. They didn't make twenty four hundred dollars. No, they only made two hundred less the tips, less the beers. <laughs> You know, overhead, so, electricity, yeah. mortgage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So from, you know, in that scenario, you know, let's say that they had 50% margin. They only made a hundred bucks on that, that, you know, me sitting down at that table, probably 75. <laughs> and yet somehow they still have all the money. Well, <laughs> well because in most scenarios, people don't drop 200 and yeah. walk away yeah you know. <laughs> yeah they drop a 200 yeah. spend all that drop a <laughs> let me get 300 well actually let me get 500 because i don't want to do this over again where i got yeah i know who has time part. for that yeah who's time mm-hmm. for that so then then they plunk it down well i gotta re- win back my original 200 so they've dropped 700 you know and 
got go home yeah i'm 700 shy well you know it's all right <laughs> yeah i remember uh guys that would that would go out gambling that were they were it guys you know we'd be at a place like cincinnati where you could you could go down to the river there and um when they got down there they'd go gamble i'm like no nah, i'm not going because i'd hear the stories of them like well yeah i lost about seven or eight hundred dollars i lost about eleven hundred dollars i'm i hate to tell my wife that i'm like yeah i'm never telling my wife that i mean because i'm not i'm not ever going to do that not not that I would not tell her, I would not do it. To have not to. do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I won't have to explain why I wasted $1,100. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. All right. Let's move on. That's enough talking about gambling. Let's talk yeah. about tipping really quickly. Now, this has been one of my pet peeves for a long time. You know, Not I think tipping, tipping no no that was no i haven't lived in vermont for 11 years now so not cow tipping the other, okay okay tipping the other the other stupid tipping activity okay but, okay giving somebody you know a couple of bucks to say thank you for doing a good job that's one thing but again the whole like you know your your wage is determined by an arbitrary factor of you know like heavily contingent on things outside of your control such as the quality of the food that was prepared by the back you know the back uh, staff or my mood or whatever it's mm -hmm. just stupid it's ludicrous um i will say that the german restaurant bronwyn that i've been going to for oktoberfest they just say we add a 20 percent gratuity to all tables all to all to all checks mm -hmm. which i think it's a step in the right direction I would rather say no tipping here, please. Our price reflects a 20% increase or a 20% gratuity. We pay our staff fairly and yeah. just leave it at that. Right. But I, I believe at least what they're doing is moving in the right place uh, in the right direction. A uh, local Brazilian place that I go to adds an 18% gratuity as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, okay, don't have to think about it. At least it's, it's, it's there, but it, still i don't like it you know like if oh, i order something on the menu and i think it's twenty dollars i have to figure okay tax you know rooms and meals tax here okay now that i gotta factor the tip so like i've got to do this mental math every time i see a price and increase mm -hmm. it by say 29 percent or whatever yeah why why do you put that burden on the consumer you know mm -hmm. i think just just stupid so anyway that's enough of my rant on tipping <laughs> um let's see what else talk to me before we talk about my new toys talk to me about your your new toy uh the the 4k monitor yeah yeah so i bought well i am uh i'm, I'm approaching the big 5-0 this year and my vision join the club <laughs> <laughs> my vision is not what it once was but it's not bad enough for actual glasses it's just oh, interesting. not as bad as it once was. Uh, now, so I do wear a times one reader. So anyway, okay. long as long as nobody cares about that. Uh, what I do <laughs> care about is I bought a 4K monitor. I was like, what's, you know, what's the big deal? But I've got my MacBook Pro, which will mm -hmm. push out actually more than 4K. But mm -hmm. I was like, I really would like the sharper monitor. And does it make a, does it even make a difference? And the answer is yes, it does yes. make a difference. Um, What'd you I get? Can, uh, I got a ViewSonic. I like ViewSonic, uh, twenty-seven okay. inch, um, four K. Okay, because okay. so, uh, it's been several months now. I bought the um, the one from Mono Price, mm -hmm. which you know it's clearly a bargain. You know, monitor. It's not the top of the line, but it is mm -hmm. still four K. And yeah. the, the extra resolution is nice. No question. Mm -hmm. So it's got a nice frame around it, about a quarter of an inch black all the way around it. So yep. nice, Same. nice, small. Uh, but the font is in Mac has the, this ultra sharp font that's meant for the 4k and it yep. really does make it nice. I haven't tried the 4k on a windows machine <clears throat> to see yep. if it would go or make a difference, but I do like it a lot. Um, and it, I'm, I'm going to have to replace the other monitor because I only replaced one monitor because I, because they're, they are expensive. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I was like, well, I don't want to replace both of them and it not make that big a difference. Now, looking at the other monitor, I'm like, yeah, I need two of them now. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I got the 32 inch and I've used it with um, with the Windows machine. I've also used it with my iPad from time to time, which is kind of silly mm -hmm. because, you know, like using it with the iPad and the iPad touch screen as the primary interface, it's kind of dumb because you have to look where you're tapping and typing, you know, to, so uh, if you're using it with an external mouse and a keyboard, sure, that's, that's different, but I think mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of cool that USB-C, you just plug in that and that, and now you can do that with an iPhone if you want to. The, the new USB-C iPhones can support external video as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's pretty slick. So. Yeah, I'm going to have to go that route. I like, um, I, well, the, the you know how the iPad will do, you can share the monitor. You can make the iPad a second monitor. Yes. But it, does, yep. it doesn't actually make a full second monitor. You can travel in between the two Mac devices, but it's not a true monitor. That you can well, just... there's two options. One is you can control the iPad mm -hmm. as a second, you know, with, with the, what's it called? Sidecar? I think is that mm -hmm. the, the name for that. Um, but the other is you can turn it into a secondary display. Um, okay. I just don't do that because I have an iPad mini and, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, it's not much bigger than a big phone. So I don't get much used to that, but, but using it to control the iPad uh, via the, the Mac keyboard and mouse. I do that a lot. I like that because I'll put like when I'm in heavy duty work mode, but I want to be a little bit aware of some, you know, personal stuff. I might have like messages and discord up on the iPad mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just enough of a shift. Like, okay, I want to see what's going on over there. I'll shift gears. That's my little personal space over there. Okay. That was fun. Now back to work mm -hmm. over here. So, you know, it's a little mind hack that I play on myself sometimes. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. So I bought a few toys uh, in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And I'll go uh, price wise, I'll go cheapest to most expensive. Okay. So, a few months ago, I tested a, a text to speech reader called Speechify. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get it at the time because there are a few annoyances. Um, it's not able to parse certain um, books. Like if you read um, uh, I, like my Savage Worlds books, when I get a new one, I like to listen to all of them. And uh, it, Speechify often screws up. If you have text in two columns, it reads it as, it's, as if it's a single column. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I can't read like that, right? So that so so scrap that. And also, um, it lacks like a pronunciation dictionary. So if the voice says something wrong, you can't tweak it, right? So Voice Dream lets you tweak it, and you can set custom pronunciations for things. Like for example, my my title CISO, right? For whatever reason, Voice Dream pronounces it as CISO. CISO. So, <laughs> so, you know, I can put in, I type in, no, pronounce it as S-E-E-S-O, right? S-E-E -E space S-O, CISO. Mm -hmm. And then it says, oh, CISO, got it. You can't do that with Speechify. Despite those things, I listened to it again, and the voices are just so much better that I've switched over to Speechify. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I did an ACH transfer. So it's like 120 bucks a year. So I'm paying 10 bucks a month for this, this package, but it includes not only the iOS app. Uh, it also includes a Google Chrome plugin an extension. Mm -hmm. So I can have it basically read any web page, And so I'm doing that with like news briefs and stuff when I want to, you know, have something read to me, I'm using it a lot. And I've just found the quality of the voices is so much better. Mm -hmm. I really wanted Voice Dream to just up their game and, you know, like add, you know, AI voices and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I even emailed the developer and asked them like, hey, any plans? You know, the voices you have are okay, but compared to everything else, you know, stuff that's coming out now, it's, and they didn't even respond. Yeah. So I was like, eh, okay, never mind. So uh, I coughed up the money for Speechify and, you know, I use it pretty much every day. 
it's worth it. It's the, mm-hmm. you know, I'm definitely sending them feature requests and they're like, oh, that would be really cool. Uh, yeah, we can't do that right now. I'm like, well, <laughs> put it on your backlog or something. Yeah. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. Well, cool. So, yeah. So I bought that. That was a, that was a cheap one. That was a cheap one. Now, it's a subscription though. So potentially it could go for a long time. Mm-hmm. I also bought an Apple Watch Ultra 2. Yeah. Uh, and one thing you notice, I'm wearing the ocean band. I did see that. On the topic of paying a little extra, right? Now, is this band worth $99? No. You know. <laughs> is this band hands down far and away ahead of the like $10 knockoff that I have? Yes. I was going to ask you about that because I got the $10 knockoff and yep. it was crap. Well, does, the, the little wrist or the thing just fell apart on me. So for me, the problem with the knockoffs is the clasps, the metal part. They're just C shapes. Yes, they're not right? all the way in. Yeah, they don't go all the way through with the Apple ones. It's all the way through and it's retractable. So, you, you know, it comes apart so you can pull it out and then you clip it back in place. Mm-hmm. That alone is worth the upgrade right there. You can also tell the material that the ocean band is made. It's more, you know, more rigid, more sturdy plastic than the knockoff ones that I got. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love it. You know, I, I still occasionally will revert to the knockoffs when I want to wear white or black, but my go-to band nowadays is just the orange ocean band mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I've definitely used the, the new double pinch feature a couple of times to pause music or answer a phone call. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have noticed that uh, the wake word is much more reliable when I tell it to do something on the watch. Yeah. So that S nine processor is it's, it's living up to the promise of being more reliable. So, so far I'm happy with the ultra uh, ultra two. And as I told you and Scott, I traded in the old one. Mm Mm-hmm. And Apple gave me 380 bucks for it in trade. And I was able to cancel the um, the balance of uh, my Apple Care on it. So basically get that money back. So yeah, I got about 50% back what I paid for it. And given that I planned on having the watch for two years, makes, you know, I, I feel like a, it's a, you know, perfectly fair trade. I basically get the new watch at no additional charge. So pretty so- happy. Are you on a, you're on a cellular plan too on that? Yeah. And yep. did, did Apple, so you went through Apple for your trade and you purchased it through Apple? Correct. And then you just told them which vendor you use when you bought it? Then I just, it. when I go to activate it, I just went to Verizon's portal and said, you know, I have a new device and it, it walks you through the transfer. Now in classic cellular carrier uh uh manner they screw up the process yeah or you have um, to call in uh well luckily i didn't have to call this time around but i was able to get by uh essentially i went through the process and you get to the last step and it just hangs and you're on the phone in the so you go through the apple watch app on your phone to go through the process to train and it opens up a browser to open up the verizon app Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, what are you retiring? What are you removing? Okay, you're upgrading this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then it's like, hey, your watch is due for an upgrade. I'm like, it's five minutes old. <laughs> I'm not upgrading this watch. Shut up. Just, you know, just transfer <laughs> the stupid cellular thing. And it gets to the very end and it's like, oh, we're sorry. We can't continue at this time. Mm-hmm. I put it to bed, went to sleep, got up in the morning, tried again, at which point it's like, Yes, we're ready to add this watch to your plan. It will only cost you $10 a month more. I'm like, uh, no, no, no. And then I canceled. And then at that time, I realized that it had actually activated the watch. So the oh. trick is wait overnight and, you know, transfer the cellular. And yes, that finally worked. But of course, that was the painful part of the whole process. And I knew it would be. Mm-hmm. So. So that got, I got over that. So uh, yeah, but so far I'm loving it. And, you know, battery life seems pretty comparable to what, you know, the old one. So I don't know, you know, I wasn't expecting much difference there. Um, But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy still, you know, still, still loving my Apple watch. It's a, it's a worthwhile tech investment. Yeah. I, you know, and, and I hated mine the first time around and, and I, I like it now because I've, I've considered that it's not 
it, I had to change my perspective. It's not a watch. It is yep. a wearable piece of technology. If I want to yep. watch, I'll put my Timex on. <laughs> <laughs> something that's cheap but does the job just as good if all you need is tell tell time right right but like when i went to the seychelles um i took the apple watch off and put it away because yep. with without prop i didn't have good cellular and i didn't have good internet and i the internet that i did have i didn't want to lose on ba my bandwidth on the, right there so like i turned it off yep. put my apple watch on but the rest of my life you know here in the states where i have yep. good yep. signal cellular and wi-fi at home wi-fi at the office and good so it's it's a perfect extension but if i yep. just want to watch put the apple watch away <laughs> yep yep yeah it's more than that it's a it's a wearable computer that you know can tell time <laughs> what i love that i can do is I can walk the dog. Um, I can take my ear, my ear pods. I can answer the phone if I need to. I can listen to audible and I could listen to music if I want to. I mean, those are the main yeah. things that I do with them. And I can even yeah. do texting. I would say texting is a stretch on a, you know, if you sent me a long thread, I'd be like, I've got to read that when I get back. But um, if I wanted to say, hey, Peter, I want to talk to you tomorrow, I could easily do that, you know, with yep. text to speech or speech yep. to text. And it just. Yeah. Goes. Yeah. And and the other thing, too, um, is, you know, audio dictation. You can send audio messages now, too. No. Oh, so, okay. yeah. So you can say, you know, hey, so and so send Peter Nicolaitis an audio message. And it usually gets that now with the with the S9 chip, it's more reliable. Mm -hmm. But um, with the old watch, it used to screw that up a lot. I would say send it and it would be dictating and you could see it's transcribing. And it was, no, I want an audio message. Mm. <laughs> um, one word of warning, though, with uh, are you running watch OS 10 now? Did you upgrade to the latest? I, I let it. Yeah. OK, so one thing I've noticed, which is complete opposite, it used to be after you dictated a message, you could press the digital crown to send the message right now. Mm -hmm. as opposed to waiting some indeterminate length for it to decide to send, right? It used to wait, I think like 30 seconds or something, and then it would send. Okay. With Watch OS 10, they give you a little countdown wheel so you can see when it's about to send. But I only found out recently that pressing the digital crown cancels sending. Ah. So in my first week or two, I was dictating all sorts of messages to people and i'm like yeah send now click and they weren't getting my messages uh, okay and i found out they see that's the kind of thing like when you change the behavior to be the exact opposite of what it used to be mm -hmm. that takes a little getting used to you know i was like apple seriously you know like so i was a little but but when i got to the actual watch os 10 out of the beta during the um, like trial setting it up, it, it was saying like, oh, you can press the digital crown now to cancel sending. I was like, oh, that's new. Would have been nice for you to tell me that during the beta cycle. So I knew that I was canceling all these messages I was trying to send. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, but hey, there you go. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, yeah, that was it. But that's not the final new toy that I bought. The final new toy. Final new toy that I bought. Probably the this might be the last new toy I bought. Well, it's definitely the last new toy that I bought for the quarter. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the year, but uh, I got rid of the Tesla. Ah, oh. <laughs> I am where, Elon free, baby. <laughs> where did you shove it? <laughs> I shoved it down into a local Kia dealership. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah it uh it appreciated a little bit um mm -hmm. so a year nearly a, a well yeah a year when was it end of 2021 i guess yeah so almost two years later um i got about two thousand dollars more than the um the previous kia dealership i had spoken with had offered me in trade for it Mm -hmm. Um, so I was able to completely pay off what I owed and still throw about 20,000 more towards a new Kia EV6. 
And that's what I'm driving right now. Mm -hmm. So once again, I have an SUV. I have all wheel drive. <clears throat> I have a sunroof. Um, feature wise, it's pretty close to the Tesla. It does the stay in lane stuff with, mm -hmm. you know, what Tesla calls autopilot. Um, it has greater range than the, than the Tesla did. Now, granted, you know, it's a six years. Things have changed in the EV space, right? Yeah. How much um, range does it get? uh around 300 miles oh that's good that's almost 100 more right yeah oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so I'm, I'm i'm pretty psyched with that um one thing i did not realize i kind of apparently shot myself in the foot uh but it so last year we had on the ballot in massachusetts an initiative to enforce the right to repair so that you could take your technology device to anywhere for service, not just the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Now think this sort of thing has happened with Apple devices, right? Because, you know, like small independent computer repair shops and third parties would complain that Apple, it's all proprietary. You can't force me to take my thing to you to repair it. And this was also a big thing with John Deere tractors, for example, hmm. where, you know, they're like the dealer, you, you bought the tractor from us, but you need to bring it back to me for anything you could possibly want to do with it. Okay. And so that kind of lock in, I, I don't really care for. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so geared towards companies like Tesla, uh, this law was, you know, basically said, you know, no, you can't do that. You must lock in and you must not lock it in and you must, um, supply all the telemetry and stuff that you you're collecting you must make this available in an open format huh. because the idea is like you know imagine you know like when like when you take any other car to the shop and they quote plug it into the computer mm -hmm. to get diagnostics right that's an open standard that it reads it scott wilsey friend of the show would be able to talk more about this because i know he's purchased that kind of stuff for his cars before um but the idea was like, you know, with these more advanced cars, there's no way to do that. And there isn't always an API that lets you plug in to your car to get this data. So this law said, you must do this. Subaru and then Kia responded by pulling their app from the state. So any cars sold in Massachusetts, they're like, oh, well, we can't comply with that. So we just won't offer you the app. So therefore, if we're not collecting all this data over the internet, we don't have to share it with anybody. Huh. So as such, I have now taken a step backwards. Like when I want to start my car on a cold day, I have mm -hmm. to walk out to it and push the start button and turn on the heat and then walk back inside. <laughs> and I was like, it's 20 freaking 23. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. So... But, you know, the fact that companies like Tesla, et cetera, are complying with this law tells me that Subaru and Kia are just being spiteful. Mm -hmm. And I'm really hoping that they come around because this is, it's not cool. But I mean, I bought the car, right? So what are they going to do? You know, it's like, they're not, not obligated. So anyway, mm -hmm. a little disappointed about that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, really liking it so far. It's, it's pretty slick. Plenty of pickup, plenty of power, lots of glitzy, like you can change the interior lighting colors. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's got lots of little gimmicky stuff. Um, the user interface is taking a lot of getting used to because the Tesla interface is really well designed. I might have had a lot of misgivings about the, you know, the technology in the car, but the UI, it's very intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing the Kia has that the Tesla probably never will have is... Apple CarPlay support. <laughs> so even though the screen is not as big as the big, you know, 17 inch display that I had on there, it's got a generously, you know, sized screen for navigation and infotainment. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, plug in my phone into the USB port and then boom, maps or Waze or Overcast or Apple Music or whatever shows up right on the screen. Um, there's good CarPlay support for Microsoft Teams. So when I'm yeah. taking a Teams call, I can do it right there. And I've got all the Teams control to, you know, hang up or pause or mute everything, you know, right on the call and stuff. So, so I'm pretty happy so far. So far, I think it's a, it's a good investment. Oh, and my monthly payments went down by 200 bucks. Yeah, cool. Yeah. 
So well, I didn't realize nice. I didn't realize that the Tesla didn't include Apple CarPlay because no. you know our because Ford's because Elon. Chevys do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and again, there's a lot you're seeing a lot with um, car um, manufacturers trying to shift people, you know, towards their own alternatives. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, guys, don't you you suck at this. Don't try. Just let Apple and, you know, Android Auto and, and Apple CarPlay just support that. Let the people who know how to do user interfaces for stuff like that do their mm-hmm. jobs. Don't try to come, you know, come to compare it. So. Yeah. Yeah. My concern, yeah. you know, a concern that I have, not just for EVs, but cars in general right now with those integrations with cap, you know, Apple CarPlay and I mean, Android has theirs, and, you know, I guess it's Google Play or whatever it is, but so Elizabeth uh, Blazer, we bought it in 2022. What is that car going to do as far as phone integration 10 years from now? Ways may not even exist 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Apple CarPlay may not exist 10 years from now. Uh, are the manufacturers going to... Uh, make sure that software vendors write the APIs that work for these legacy vehicles. I don't know. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's a, will the legacy vehicles even be able to keep up with the applications because they're, I mean, they put, they don't put the most expensive computers in these things. They put cheap now. in. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're not. And exactly. Exactly. I mean, but th- that's the reason to, you know, to not rely on the car to do it. Just mm-hmm. make an interface, make it a dumb terminal mm-hmm. and call it good. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, that's my, my truck, you know, is tw- my, my red truck is a 98. <laughs> you know? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it has just imagine if, if, you know, if, if back then your, your, you know, that truck had just, uh, you know, just a dumb terminal interface and you could still be rocking, you know, on your iPhone or something today. Wouldn't that be cool? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd I, be cool. Uh, you know, I've kind of, I've worked a way around that now, you know, I've got, I, I just use my phone. I mean, my phone is my navigation. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, but it's nicer being able to use like the controls on the steering wheel and, you know, the bigger touch screen than having to fumble around for your little phone. Right? Yeah. So that's, that's the, the advantage. The mic, the mic that's in the car, the yep. Peter Speakers. Nicolaitis just sent you a message. Would you like me to read that to you? Yes, yeah. please. Would yeah. you like to reply back? Y- yes, I would. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well this is fun so we we finally caught up and we've gone on for about an hour and a half i want to just say sometimes you know those class action lawsuits that you get you know settlements you probably get every now and then a little postcard in the mail yeah Uh, i will channeling the uh the grumpy old geeks i will agree with them and say that it is our civic duty to file those claims and make sure we get our money even if it's only a buck or two but, uh, you know, just because otherwise the lawyers get it all right. And we also oh, yeah. want to take it out of the pockets of these big giant companies that are screwing us over. Sometimes it's actually really worth it because I filed my class action claim against Capital One mm-hmm. for the breach settlement from a few years back. Mm-hmm. And I just got 424 bucks. Nice. So yeah, I was I was pretty satisfied with that. So, so that's a nice you. dinner in a hotel. Darn right. Yeah. <laughs> now just imagine, of course, the lawyer probably got, you know, for my efforts, got like a thousand dollars or twelve hundred or so just <laughs> yeah. for you know for my portion of that claim. But still, I'm not gonna <laughs> think about that. I'm gonna go out and have a nice dinner in a hotel tonight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we should wrap this up, my friend. This is good. We've gone long, but we've made up for the the two false starts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody got their money's worth today. <laughs> Indeed. You got every dollar that you paid for this podcast, dear listener. Yes, sir. All right. I brought us in. Why don't you take us out? 
All right, dear listener, we do we would like some feedback if you'd like to give us some feedback. Or if you'd like to discuss a particular topic, then you can drop us a line at www.blurringthelinespodcast.com. There's a form fill there. Peter and I both get a copy of those. Um, like I said, it'd be cool to hear from you. If you'd like to learn more about us as our as the hosts, you can find Peter at yogawithpeter.com friendswithbrews.com and if you are a mastodoner then you can find at nicolaitis at infosec.exchange if you're looking for me you can find me at sublime computer services at sublimecomp.com or the rrlavenderfarm.com or you can still find me on formerly known as the twitter at x at sublimecomp and with that you can x adam on x you can x me on the x <laughs> <laughs> and with that we can hit the big red button big red button